first reading today is from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, starting at verse 8. The child grew, and on the day that he was weaned, Abraham gave a great feast. One day Ishmael, whom Hagar the Egyptian had born to Abraham, was playing with Sarah's son Isaac. Sarah saw them and said to Abraham, Send this slave girl and her son away. The son of this woman must not get any part of your wealth, which my son Isaac should inherit. This troubled Abraham very much, because Ishmael was also his son. But God said to Abraham, Don't be worried about the boy and your slave Hagar. Do whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that you will have the descendants I have promised. I will also give many children to the son of the slave girl, so that they will become a nation. He, too, is your son. Early the next morning, Abraham gave Hagar some food and a leather bag full of water. He put the child on her back and sent her away. She left and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water was all gone, she left the child under a bush and sat down about a hundred meters away. She said to herself, I can't bear to see my child die. While she was sitting there, she began to cry. God heard the boy crying, and from heaven the angel of God spoke to Hagar. What are you troubled about, Hagar? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy crying. Get up, and go and pick him up and comfort him. I will make a great nation out of his descendants. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well. She went and filled the leather bag with water and gave some to the boy. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and became a skillful hunter. His mother found an Egyptian wife for him. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Roman, chapter 6. Should we continue to live in sin so that God's grace will increase? Certainly not. We have died to sin. How then can we go on living in it? For surely you know that when we were baptized into union with Christ, we were baptized into union with his death. By our baptism, then, we were buried with him and shared his death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from death by the glorious power of the Father, so also we might live a new life. For since we have become one with him in dying as he did, in the same way we shall be one with him by being raised to life as he was. And we know that our old being has been put to death with Christ on his cross, in order that the power of the sinful self might be destroyed, so that we should no longer be the slaves of sin. For when a person dies, he is set free from the power of sin. Since we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that Christ has been raised from death and will never die again. Death will no longer rule over him. And so, because he died, sin has no power over him. And now he lives his life in fellowship with God. In the same way, you are to think of ourselves as dead, so far as sin is concerned, but living in fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news as declared in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, starting from verse 24. No pupil is greater than his teacher, no slave is greater than his master. So a pupil should be satisfied to become like his teacher and a slave like his master. If the head of the family is called Belzebul, 
the members of the family will be called even worse names. So do not be afraid of people. Whatever is now covered up will be uncovered and every secret will be made known. What I am telling you in the dark, you must repeat in broad daylight. And what you have heard in private, you must announce from the rooftops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of God, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. For only a penny you can buy two sparrows, yet not one sparrow falls to the ground without your father's consent. As for you, even the hairs of your head have all been counted, so don't be afraid. You're worth much more than many sparrows. If anyone declares publicly that he belongs to me, I will do the same for him before my Father in heaven. But if anyone rejects me publicly, I will reject him before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to bring peace to the world. No, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. I came to set sons against their fathers, daughters against their mothers, daughters-in-law against their mothers-in-law. A man's worst enemy will be members of his own family. Whoever loves his father or mother more than me is not fit to be my disciple. Whoever loves his son or daughter more than me is not fit to be my disciple. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow in my steps is not fit to be my disciple. Whoever tries to, great, to gain his own life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will gain it. This is the Gospel of Christ.